Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and what a day this has been. What a roller coaster. <laughs> so before I start, first kill graphic novel. Uh, the $5,000 day was actually a $6,000 day. It's now at like 12,000 over three or four days, and we are only 11 away from 2,000 backers. So that is very, very exciting. <laughs> All of the interior art is complete. So we're just working on the lettering and the covers and that's it um uh and then um does anyone remember regiment this is like a story idea from like the first year of it was this formula is discovered that can turn people into superhumans but it's a really it's really difficult to follow it you got to be exact the process lasts for a year so basically the only people who have time to do this are prisoners um, so, uh, I saw this, uh, story about this ancient, uh, library where only 5% of the books had been translated and I was like, wait, that's from the story. So, um, uh, Narwhal and I went back and forth with some story ideas and I wrote the summary for the script. So that's, uh, very, very exciting. That one was actually taken off the schedule because I just didn't have a way to do it, but. We finally uh, broke the story uh, today. So um, uh, I've been scheduling out my time. It's funny, people were saying, which app do you use? Uh, and then I went to go look it up and it's like the worst rated. <laughs> like the app I use is so bad, you can't even click on something uh, to say that you completed it. It just says like, okay, next hour. So it's actually got really low ratings, <laughs> but it works for me. But the side effect is I do a lot of stuff, I get a lot of stuff done, but then I'm tired at like 9 or 10 p.m. and I go to sleep like a normal person. But since I'm used to just getting four or five hours of sleep, now I'm waking up at 3 in the morning, just totally awake and just like doom scrolling uh, social media for hours. So by the time <laughs> by the time that the sun came up, I hated everyone and everything and comics just absolutely disgusted me. Um, and then people started waking up and I started talking to people and then story idea and then, then you know, another person and then it ended up being a great comics day. So I'm not going to bury the lead. There has been so much effort with my channel, with other channels to brainstorm how to save the American comic book industry. And I will say, period, point blank, it does not deserve to be saved. And it never did, never is in quotes, never since it started having real problems five or six years ago. But um, so, uh, you know, one of the things you do at four in the morning when you can't sleep is you just go check out the usual suspects and whatever stupid stuff they're uh, tweeting. And I noticed a couple trends. Number one, uh, the usual suspects who were kind of not really acting up much for the last year or so, they are all just acting super weird. There seems to be like competitive depression. Like they are all having like their worst mental health day ever. Um, and it just seems like just a way to get attention. Uh, Mags uh, is on a career resurgence, actually getting work. She's basically been shut out of any work. Uh, for the last few years because of being difficult to work with and uh, incredibly low sales. But um, this book was actually, the in YA, they will sign the deal and then the book will come out like six years later, four to six years later. I mean, they really plan out their schedule and their schedule is full for several years. So I believe this was a 2018 contract that Mags signed when she was the hottest writer in comics. Um, and now it's <laughs> and now it's coming out. The art looks fine. I guess in YA, they have much more of an established pipeline for releasing books in that they have these, I forget what they're called, but it's like semi-professional -profe semi critics that they will give them early copies of. And um, the reviews were not good. Uh, the positive ones were just shill reviews that just said, diverse creator, diverse characters. 
But uh, others pointed out that it was not very well written. Uh, the one I thought that was most funny, and I'm hoping it actually is true, is Mags and other diversity hires like Mags are so obsessed with identity that it's all they see. And apparently one of the villains has scoliosis, but that is just mentioned, and then they never do anything with it. It's just like everyone has to have something diverse about them. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, the queer and autistic and trans characters in this book uh, fighting a demon with scoliosis. Actually, I'm really looking forward to that. I think this book comes out in a few days. But uh, so Mags promotes it, just says the book is going to come out in one week. And then um, this is how she really sells it. It's queer. It's autistic. And it's full of legit witchcraft. And um, it was a bad night. The doom scrolling, everyone was just acting stupid as fuck. Like all the usual suspects just acting stupid as fuck, just causing problems. Nobody's selling comics. Nobody's buying comics. Um, then the other one that really bummed me out is that one crowdfunding app. And it was like two middle-aged men. They looked like they were 40s or 50s. And it was uh, a crowdfunding app, and the guy says, uh, and he was like really depressed and just like sad-eyed and defeated. And he was like, um, I know you're not supposed to judge a group by the actions of a few, but uh, we're not going to let CG use this crowdfunding app because they have a bad reputation. Like, he literally was doing something he didn't want to do out of, of fear. So, I forgot to look this up. I was going to look it up. Oh, maybe I'll do it while I am talking. So, there is an entire genre of comedy on TikTok that is about the day after The Purge. The Purge being a franchise of movies where... Um, you are allowed to kill anyone. I think it's any crime is legal for 24 hours. It's uh, Stanzi, P Stanzi Potenza. She's the most famous uh, comedian, but there's also Erin Hadamer. And she, boy, she does even better. 2.9 million views. Or is, it, or is it likes? I think that's views. Um, but there's an entire genre of comedy on TikTok based on how awkward it is the day after the purge when you know you're taking the garbage out and you see your neighbor and y'all were just trying to kill each other last night and some of you were successful and some of you weren't but you you just got to hey <laughs> and you know nobody wants to admit it i mean it's legal but nobody's like I almost gotcha they're all wearing masks it's like did I see you buy like a mask that had like a like a cat face, a glowing cat face at Hobby Lobby? And then somebody with a glowing cat face mask broke into my house and, and killed my grandfather last night. And they're like, that's weird. That's so weird. Anyway, this is how I look at the modern American comic book industry. For five years, there was a certain group of people that just viciously evilly attacked people mainly just for the joy of hurting people and then there is a larger group of people who said nothing because they didn't want to skyline themselves as we say in the military and become the next victim so when this is all over you basically have an industry that can't look at each other in the eye they can't look at the they can't look at themselves in the mirror they're like they're either vicious pieces of shit who just destroyed things and companies and careers and books and characters just to make themselves feel better. Or there are essentially just flat out cowards who just said absolutely nothing. I remember the last time they went after Frank Miller and there were people who actually said things. They said like, I support him. I don't care what other people say. It was a, uh, Mark Millar, cartoonist kayfabe, and it was one of the, it was, it was an article, I think it was on CBR. I was really shocked. But every other time <coughs> anyone has been attacked for about half a decade, 
Nobody said shit. So when this... And all of this, you know, dark night of the soul of uh, doom-scrolling comics social media came after yesterday where I listened to videos by, I think it was Perch and Thinking Critical, where they were talking about what can we do to save the comic book industry? And they were throwing out this idea, this idea. I've done the same thing multiple times. And how about this? This ugly, hateful, petty, and vindictive industry does not deserve to be saved. You have just idiots hiring other idiots and their corporate bosses don't give a fuck because they just bought the property to make movies and even when the movies aren't successful they still make a couple million in profit and um, nobody gives a fuck. I mean the fact that Mags is getting her 80th swing at bat after striking out is ridiculous. The fact that a 50 year old man has to sit there with his sad eyes and he's being forced to do it because Twitter weasels will harass him to let what what is this like it's the idea that all these grown people say I'm super sad can you say something that will make me happy and it's like you are a senior editor typing this on your social media account like what is this and these people are like, I saw a puppy yesterday. And she's like, yay. Um, uh, but uh, it's, um, it's, not, it's not worth saving. It hasn't been for a very, very long time. I don't think the mainstream American comic book industry has been worth saving for almost a decade. But I do have good news because the mainstream direct market is not all of comics. As a... Uh, Heidi McDonald and other corrupt journalists like to conveniently say, oh, uh, comics is lots of things. It's like, yeah, it is uh, lots of things in some regards. 95% of the time when we say comics, we're talking about the American direct market. But you knew that. Um, but uh, I've talked about this before. I think I've only mentioned it in community posts, but uh, I don't think I've talked about it in videos. But crowdfunding has stabilized. Uh, crowdfunding was shrinking for a while. Um, and sometimes precipitously for some uh, people, for, for some franchises. But I'm tracking a whole bunch of successful crowdfunding people and things have stabilized. Um, uh, I would say they were right size, although it can be tough to deal with a corporate term like that when you're making less money than you are. But things are stable now. You can get loans off a of stable. You can plan and budget and build a future off of stable. It's not like, oh, $400,000 or you're a failure. Did you make a profit? What was your profit margin? Could you have made a, a, a larger profit margin in the same amount of time with the same crew? That's, that's success is solid. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Palmiotti, not the sharpest tool in the shed, but uh, he just put out his uh, 17th crowdfunding campaign and it looks like this one could be the most financially successful. And there are several people like that that are having continued uh, improvement. Or they have, if they have shrunk a little bit, things are solid. So um, it was a weird. It was a, well, it was a very comics day. I've been up since like three. So it's been 12 hours. Uh, and, and it was very uh, dark at the first few hours. Uh, literally when it was dark outside and then when the sun came out then things started to get brighter but um, I'm talking to all kinds of people with different perspectives and they're like yeah all the enthusiasm all the momentum the mainstream industry is just gone I'm seeing again Heidi McDonald uh, talking about one convention comics pro and now and they keep really over hyping. It's like joy and camaraderie. It's like books, sales. What what are they? Nothing. Nobody knows. Okay, so it's just middle-aged people flying to a convention center to hang out with each other. The same people who viciously attacked each other or st stood by and did nothing for half a decade. And it's just, oh my gosh, it's Brian Hibbs. 
<laughs> I'm so excited to see him. Um, so uh, comics, uh, the way most people think about it, mainstream American comic book industry has a very dark future. But other comics, obviously manga, Reina Telgemeier. But uh, I've been very encouraged by how well crowdfunding has stopped the slide, solidified. Uh, it is becoming more professional. I've mentioned this for myself, but I think other people really need to get into this. Uh, mailing lists. I just found out that MailChimp lets you know who opened the mass emails for mailing lists. I didn't know that. I thought it was just fire and forget. So I'm going to sign up for that or something similar. And then I think people really need to move into digital marketing, just like Facebook ads and stuff like that. Cartoonist Kayfabe, they were talking about this um, uh, Alan Moore writing course. Uh, I bought it. Jim Rugg almost felt like embarrassed. He's like, yeah, they basically brainwashed me. My feed was just nothing but ads for this course till I bought it. It sounds like he thought it was okay. But uh, I experimented. I had a pilot program for Expendables Go to Hell for Facebook ads. And it was successful. It was just I didn't have the bandwidth to... Somebody else was running it, but then I had to coordinate and stuff like that. There was a learning curve. But I really think that uh, mailing lists, traditional marketing, obviously being more professional, getting books out more on time, not late. First Kill is looking like it's actually going to be possibly even a month early. And this is a huge project, uh, just as large as the Expendables was logistics wise to make it happen. So um, comics is comics has a dark future and uh, comics has a bright future. And it just depends what you mean when you say comics. Anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel. Link is in the description. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm very excited I don't have to edit this video because I spent three hours, maybe four hours, editing this 15 minute video. And it's not like it was like three hours long. It was like 26. Okay, I took a lot of breaks. I got distracted. I hate editing so freaking much. But when I first launched this, it started really slow. And I was like, oh man, that sucks. I spent the entire afternoon editing it. But now it seems to be really picking up. And I have had Geez, by now it's a couple dozen people between um, uh, comments on the video and people emailing me or DMing me. They're like, in the history of your channel, this might actually be the best video you've ever done. So that's the too gay to do math. <laughs> that's not my quote. That's the guy uh, in the TikTok. I was just quoting him. Those are his words. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.